Hey everyone, this is Mike and welcome to my guide for Memoria Misera Extreme, the new extreme trial for patch 5.25. This was the secret trial that was attached to the relic weapons. Um, of course, you don't need to do this one in order to finish the relic weapon itself, but you can get some cool diable artifact gear from this one. So if you want some glamour uh, of the level 80 artifact gear, then you can basically go and do this one. Of course, this guide is going to be the same style as all of my previous guides, so if you've seen any of my previous ones that you can kind of know what to expect from this one, so it's going to be just a walkthrough through the fight explaining some things where necessary. So first of all, we're going to be starting off with Altius. This is a raid wide AoE, so make sure you're basically healed up for this one, but it's going to do two more things. So first of all, it is going to be spawning these crosses on the position of all of your players. Not only that, but there later, whenever they finish their cause bar, which you can see here in the enmity list, they're also going to be dashing through the arena in the way that your character was looking. So it's going to be very important to stack these up and all look in the same direction. The way we handle it is we have all of our DPS and healers stand on the C side of the arena looking towards A, and all of our tanks are standing on A looking towards C, or like our one tank. Uh, in this case, our tank ended up joining us in the spec, but you don't necessarily need to do that um, because you can just stand on A, look towards C, and then the A and the C markers will create like a line through the arena that is unsafe, basically. Uh, the AOEs themselves aren't very big either, so that's all totally fine. I'm gonna let this play out before I explain this next mechanic. So you can see, there we go, bam, the arenas fly through the, or the AoEs fly through the arena. As you could see, one of the AoEs wasn't aimed correctly, so it flew towards northeast. So very important that you aim these correctly. Now, before we move away, we actually wait for the boss to do one more mechanic. So we just stand in front of these AoEs, and we wait for the boss to cast Alea Lacta Est. This is going to be a four times cleave in front of him, and a single cleave in uh, from the back of him. So what you need to do is when you see this cast, you move towards his back, which you can see us do here. And we wait for the four cleaves, two, three, four, and then we move towards the front, and then the back cleave goes off, and then the AoEs fly through the arena. This Alea Lacta Est is basically targeting a random player, and he'll face that person, and then he'll do the cleaves. So since in the beginning there's not much going on, everybody can just stack together, and this will always be handled in the same way. This mechanic will come back later into the fight in phase two, where it's gonna be a lot more hectic and it might just like basically face a random player and you'll just have to react to where the boss is facing rather than just always have him face the same way like you can do right here at the start of the fight. So this one can be totally baited, the other one can be baited as well, um, but it is a lot more hectic so don't expect people to bait that second one basically. Sitius is a tank buster that looks like a gigantic cleave in front of him, but it's basically going to hit the two first targets that are hit by this animation. So if you, for example, have both of your tanks in front and you have like your caster or a healer stand right here for some reason, um, then they won't actually get hit. It's just a one hit, even though it does two cleaves, it's only one hit on both of your tanks. So make sure that you're stacked up for this, use some cooldowns. Uh, if you want and like your co-tank is dead, for example, you can totally use a tank invulnerability to take both of the hits as one tank. Just need to make sure that nobody else gets hit by the animation, basically. Then, he's going to follow it up with Ignis Est. This attack has two different variations, but the uh, randomness of this attack... Uh, but basically, this attack doesn't have any randomness to it. There is one random mechanic in the fight which will trigger a mechanic sequence, which is in phase 2. Um, but this same attack, the Ignis Est, also has another variant, which is Ventus Est, which is going to be different. But they just look the same, you just handle them different. The sequence in which they happen in Phase 1 is going to be the same. Now, this again will be baited towards a random player, or like will target a random player. So what we do for this, again, the same thing, party on C, tanks on A meaning that he will either cleave towards C or towards A, making it so that B and D are always going to be safe spots for this cleave. Which is going to be important, because here we're going to be dividing ourselves in two different groups, one healer on B, one healer on D, because they're going to be targeted by a stack marker. Whilst this goes off, the Ignis S is going to fly through the arena. This one will also blow up the center of the arena, the AoE actually originates from the boss, but if the boss is completely dead center, which he will usually be as he actually jumps towards the center quite often, um, then you can use these lines that are on the arena to kind of gauge how far you can stand away from the boss. 
So Ignis S goes off, as you can see the middle explodes, the Ignis flies through the arena as well, and then both of the healers get their stack markers resolved as well. You don't need four people in each stack, you can totally do five, three, I believe two people also works with some shields, um, so you shouldn't worry about that one too much, but of course if you can get four people into the stack then that is gonna help you out quite a bit. Next mechanic is Electrified Gun Shield. He has three different gun shield attacks, each one of them will spawn a gauge, and once that gauge fills to 100%, depending on which gun shield he used, he's going to be doing a different attack on the party. Electrified Gun Shield will make it so that you're going to get knocked away. So, after this one, this spawns the gauge, will cast another Altius, meaning again, everybody stacks up C and A, look towards north-south, so that all the AoEs are baited correctly. So move out of this. Then again he's gonna target one random player with Ignis Est. Exact same thing as last time. Make sure that you're not standing inside of the middle of the arena when this AoE goes off. The AoE will go off just about the same time as your gauge reaches 100. As you can see over here Ignis Est is casting and then the charge is almost at 100. So right after the middle explodes the knockback will happen as well. So you can basically kind of hit at 90% that you go away from the middle and that you also use your knockback prevention like your sure cost or your arm's length because that will mitigate the knockback. Reason why it's pretty important to not get knocked back into the wall is because when you hit the wall you're going to be given a slow debuff and you'll also be stoned quite literally. So your party needs to free you if you are into the wall basically. Then he's going to be following this up with a reinforced gun shield. This one, when it reaches 100, will spawn two parry shields, kind of like Ravana from Heaven's Ward, but you'll see it when it happens. Another tank buster, Sitius. Since one of our tanks died right before, our Dark Knight is going to use Living Dead to basically eat both of the hits, and then of course he needs to be healed up afterwards. Then the gauge reaches 100%, and as you can see, both of the shields spawn here making sure that you don't get hit by this. Now, of course, I got knocked back because I was hitting the boss as I was still standing behind him. As you can see, it gives you damage down, knocks you back, does damage to you, and also gives you a damage over time effect. So really important that you don't get hit by this um, because the damage down is tough, the flesh wound also does damage over time to you, and you also take damage, and if you're in a bad position and you get knocked back into the wall, you take even more damage, so the chances of you dying are quite high here, as you can see, for example, our tank got yeeted into the wall and died, so you gotta be careful with that one. And then last but not least, we have Loaded Gun Shield. This is the last one of the three gun shields that he can do. This one will target all players with a Fire AoE when it finishes casting. This time around he spawns a Ventus Est. And this one will basically be the opposite of the Ignis Est. So Ignis is red, meaning get away from the boss. Ventus is green, mean get close to the boss. So it's basically with Ignis is gonna explode an AoE around him, with Ventus is going to create a safe spot around him. So when this one resolves you can see we have a donut AoE going throughout the whole arena and only the inside of like the circle is safe. And then everybody moves out for their fire AoEs. Our tank and our Dragoon ended up overlapping here, uh, so of course because it gives you that fire resistance down, it will one-shot you, if you get hit by both of course. And then we go into a small intermission. This one is pretty much the same as Susano Extreme, where both of your tanks in this case will have to grab hold of the blade and have to spam their keyboard a little bit in order for them to not die. So as you can see two markers are gonna spawn, the blade's pulses. Both your tanks grab these. Uh, very important that your tanks grab these because these will give you a bleed and do a bunch of damage on you. So if a DPS grabs these, for example, there's a high chance they'll die. If you die whilst you are basically parrying this bleed, uh, you are going to wipe the group. So very important that you don't do that. So in this case, all of the DPS are attacking the blade's blood. Both of the tanks are spamming their keyboard a bit and then the healers just make sure that nobody dies. Both your tanks are taking a lot of damage here and the raid is also taking a fair amount of damage um, because of course this does do a pulsating AoE and we almost had our tank there, there die there again, uh, which was kind of close. 
And then we go into phase number two. Now phase two is a little bit different because this one does have randomness in it. Basically, depending on which of the two gun shields he does at the beginning, the sequence of mechanics will be different. So basically both of the gun shields have a sequence of mechanics that they are going to follow. And then depending on which of the two that he does, they are going to be changed. So electrified gun shield in this case was first, meaning that the electrified gun shield's mechanics are gonna go first, but he can also do uh, the reinforced gun shield, which means that those set of mechanics will come first. And I'll tell you how this sequence uh, goes basically. So electrified was the knockback, so pretty important to remember that. And together with this one, he will always do reinforcements as well as alea acta est for the last bit of the sequence. Now, with reinforcements, there's a bunch of things going on at the moment. So he spawns a bunch of Magitek turrets. Two of them you can't hit, and they'll target a random player. This tether can be taken away from them, which you should do. Both of your tanks should grab one of those tethers, because these are tank busters. If you want to do so, you can also get one tank, have both of them, and then you basically just use a tank in Vaughn. That works as well. Uh, the way we did it is we just used these because, of course, our tanks already used an invuln in phase one because one of the tanks was dead, uh, so they wouldn't really be that good. And it's also great to just have an invuln available when a tank buster comes up and one of the tanks died, for example. Uh, so that's why we choose to use normal cooldowns on this. Uh, the other Magitek turrets that are spawning around, they will do line AoEs that are basically targeting random players. So just make sure that they die. And then on the north side of the arena, he also spawns some mirages that will do some AoEs through the arena once they finish casting as well. So basically in sequence, tanks need to grab the tethers, use a cooldown for the tank busters, all of the DPS kill the Magitek turrets, and then you have to make sure that you don't get hit by those line AoEs, which half the group totally gets hit by, by the way. Um, but they don't do that much damage. They will give you a vulnerability up, but they don't do a lot of damage. So getting hit by them is not the end of the world. Most important thing here, is that you kill all the turrets. If the turrets are left alive, they will explode and deal raid-wide damage. I'm pretty sure this will just wipe the raid. I'm not 100% sure because I just heard from my friends that they explode and do a bunch of damage, so I assume that they would just wipe the raid. Uh, we didn't have one explode when I was doing it, so I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, but basically, kill them before they explode, and then charge reaches 100, so you're gonna get knocked back. So use that sure cost and arm's length. Uh, so that you don't end up getting stoned, like this person over here. They just got into the wall. Uh, this only requires one attack to break, uh, so just like throw a ruin to or something on there or whatever you might have. Then, Alea Acta Est again. This is the final part of the mechanic. Targeted a random player, so one, two, three, four in front, and then fifth in the back, so make sure that you pay attention to this one because you've just been moving around a bunch for the previous set of mechanics, and then this one just targets a random player, so it's very important to see where the boss is facing, uh, so that you can handle this mechanic correctly. And then we go into the second set of mechanics, which is the reinforced gun shield. So if he starts with reinforced gun shield first, right after the transition, then this is the set of mechanics that will follow. If he starts with the electrified gun shield, then this will be... Well, then you've already just seen the sequence of mechanics that happens with that one. So remember, reinforced is the uh, the shields that he spawns. Another Altius, so everybody stack up, heal up, face the same direction. Then we move away from the AoEs. Again, the random player will be targeted with Ventus Est, right after this one spawns, the AoEs will also fly through the arena, and then Gaze reaches 100, so he's gonna spawn the shields, so make sure you don't hit the shields or you get knocked back, and make sure you stay close to the boss, because of course the Ventus Est is going to do that donut AoE around the boss as well, so gotta make sure you don't get hit by that one. Another tank buster, it's Sitius. And then we have one final mechanic, which is going to be the loaded gun shield, together with an Ignis Est, meaning that everybody needs to spread around to their correct positions and also get away from the boss. So the Ignis Est is gonna target some random player again. Now together with this one, he's also going to be spawning mirages again on the outside of the arena. So what you first need to do is everybody needs to spread out to their positions for the AoEs, 
make also sure that you're on like the outside of the inner circle and then everybody moves to the safe spot where there's no of these thingies and you also stack together in your predetermined groups from before with your healers and that is the end of this set of mechanics well we still have another tank buster and then we are going to be going into the next part of the mechanic. So when it is load or uh, when it is the reinforced gun blade or gun shield is going to be doing the one with the Ventus into the Ignis. If it is the electrified gun shield, it is going to be the reinforcements into Alea Lactaes. So those are the two different set of mechanics that can interchange with each other in this fight. So here is going to be jumping away all the way to north and he's going to spawn the gun shield in front of him and he's going to be doing two attacks back to back. He's either going to do Magitech Spark or Magitech Torch. Both of these attacks um, can be interchanged as well. So it can be Spark into Torch, it can be Torch into Spark. So just make sure that you're positioned correctly for this. For Magitech Spark, you need to be spread out because every player is going to get a small AoE on them. So basically just have four players left, four players right, uh, and you'll be fine. These are very tiny AoEs, so there's a lot of space for you to spread out. And then he's going to be following it up with Magitech Torch, which is a AoE uh, that needs to be shared with the whole party. Of course, as I said, this can also be the other way around, so it could be Torch into Spark. And then just make sure that you kill the shield uh, before his attack reaches, or when his attack costs, basically, because that will most likely be a raid wipe. You have so much time for that one, so I definitely don't think that this will ever wipe groups. Then we go into the final phase. This is definitely the hardest part of the fight, but with good DPS you can totally skip this. We had an extremely bad run on this one, uh, so you're going to be seeing a lot of the mechanics, uh, which is exactly the reason why I chose this run, because we see a lot of the mechanics on runs where we had much cleaner runs. Uh, we basically barely even saw the first mechanic, basically. So the boss could be dead at this point, almost. Uh, usually he was at like 10, 7% or something like that uh, when we went into the final phase. This is also uh, completely scripted again. So the first things of the second phase, the Electrified or the uh, Defensive Gun Shield, the one with the shields, those two mechanics could be interchanged, but this final phase is scripted again. So he does the Loaded Gun Shield, meaning that everybody is going to get hit by an AoE once the charge reaches 100, but he's also going to do Fortius. Now, this is a really annoying attack to deal with. This will do a cleave and leave a puddle on every single player, meaning that we spread around in our normal spread positions again. And then this AoE is also going to rotate around the arena, depending on which one of the two that he has. So as you can see, he has a green one, or well, a blue one, I mean. So I'm going to re rewind a little bit. So as Forty starts casting, you'll see these arrows around the boss. Uh, orange means uh, clockwise, blue means counterclockwise. And then this will basically rotate around the boss. And I end up getting hit by this one. So we'll rotate four times. And after the fourth time, everybody is going to get hit by that fire AoE. So make sure that everybody is spread out. And then both of your healers are again going to get targeted uh, by this stack AoE. As you can see, two people is definitely enough to save them if you have enough uh, mitigation for it. We ended up just heal LB'ing. Uh, I would totally recommend for you to save heal LB for this portion of the fight, because in most of the runs that we did, we just ended up having so many deaths here, and then heal LB'ing right before those AoEs goes out usually saved the group. Then we have another tank buster here, so just make sure that your tanks are stacked up together. And then we're going to do the mechanic all over again, but this time around a little bit different. So this time, he does electrified gun shield instead, meaning that is the knockback. He's also going to spawn those mirages again. So everybody spreads out to their spread positions again for the Fortius. And as you can see, this time around is the orange arrows, meaning it's clockwise movement. I am also standing way too close to the boss, by the way. I should not drop the AoE that close. Then we just rotate clockwise. And then we stand in the safe spot for this one. And then we get knocked back, so use your knockback immunity or just make sure that you're close enough to the boss. 
and then we ended up killing him on this run. This is the longest run that we've had, so I'm not 100% sure if there is any more mechanics that follow this. Uh, I'd assume that there's probably like another tank buster or something like that, but normally as long as you don't have a crazy amount of deaths like we did, and you can use a limit break for your melees or something like that, and you shouldn't even see this far into the fight, most of our runs ended during the first part of this mechanic, the first time he does Fortius, um, is usually where he ended up dying for our group, of course, we all have weapons at this point, they were almost all best in slot, uh, so usually I believe Party Finder will most likely see the second set of mechanics consistently, um, so just make sure that you save a healer limit break 3, uh, just in case a lot of people end up dying to the first Fortius, and then hope that you kill him by the time the second Fortius goes out, basically, because that mechanic is really annoying to deal with, uh, and it's pretty difficult to deal with as well, in my opinion, I really having a tough time myself to try and get this one down consistently. So, that is pretty much the whole fight. If you have any more questions about certain parts of the fight, certain mechanics, anything like that, feel free to leave them down in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I'm not sure when I'll upload this. If I upload this before raid, I probably won't respond in like the first three hours because I'm going to be raiding tonight uh, for our weeklies. But if I do end up uploading this after raid, um, then of course that won't be an issue. But yeah, that's pretty much that. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for supporting me and I'll see you in the next one.